First off, I want to thank the uh, brave men and women who work behind the wall. I want to thank them on a national level because their job goes on How did they try to turn a guard? Well, President, uh, correctional officer, sorry, I apologize. Uh, but correctional How are you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji, host of Tear Talk. I'm going to do a series of videos on power and control. Today I'm going to touch on briefly communication. I think this is a very important topic, so when we get back from our sponsors, I'm going to talk about why we need to always make sure we're in control every time we have an interaction with an inmate, especially with communication. And I'm going to tell you a way that inmates try to gain control during communication. Something a lot of people don't realize, but it's in regards to inmates asking questions. So when we get back from our sponsors, we're going to talk about control. And for specifically this video, communication, controlling the communication between you and an inmate. Now guys, if you haven't, the show Tear Talks for you, brave men and women that work in correction. So please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post up a video. I stand by for our sponsor. I wanted to attend a university that had an intelligence program. I wanted to look at problems different. I wanted to increase my critical thinking abilities. AMU offered those avenues to expand. Obtaining your degree as an adult, you're actually paying yourself and investing in yourself. You can't put a dollar on it, it's priceless. It's something that can never be taken away from you. American Military University, learn from the leader. Thank you guys for listening to our sponsor. You know, around 2008, I was up at the Bergen County Jail and I got a chance to meet a gentleman by the name of Dale Sollers. Now, Dale Sollers put together a class called Identifying Deceptive Behavior and I was there. He was teaching it to the Sheriff's Department. It was a great course, guys. It, it really dealt with the interview and interrogation setting, but just basically how to apply stress and how to really control the communication and through that stress, how to look for deceptive Signs that can tell you that the person you're dealing with is being deceptive. I thought it was a great course. I got a chance to talk to Dale afterwards, told him what I did, and I said, maybe it'd be great if we could find a way to do this for corrections, like an IDB for corrections. And we wind up working together for a while, and we created a class on identifying deceptive behavior for corrections, and we did have some correctional personnel that came to the course. And guys, I'm telling you something, it was a great course. But eventually we went our separate ways. Dale, Dale went one way and I went the other. But there were a lot of things that Dale taught me that stayed with me today. And part of the dialogue I want to have with you today comes from one of the things that he taught me. He taught me that the person asking questions is the one that's in control. Now think about that. that that's true. When you're watching a show where you have an interviewer and an interviewee, who's in control of the flow of that show? Who's in control of the information that is being requested? It's the interviewer. That's why journalists always get the credit for having these great interviews because they're the ones that are bringing the information out of the individual and just controlling the flow. Now come to corrections. We have interactions with inmates all day. And inmates love asking questions because when you answer those questions, you're providing them with knowledge, and knowledge is power. That's why we always tell people, don't give up your personal information. Because that personal information will be used against you. Plus, it gives the inmate knowledge, and with that knowledge comes power. If an inmate gets information on you, however personal, that gives them the knowledge they need to create leverage. That leverage puts them in a position of power. So again, answering questions all days from inmates, besides the fact that it's personal information you're giving up, you're also giving them a level of control. They're in control of the dialogue. Now real quick, a little side note, but definitely does pertain to what we're talking about. I know a lot of, a lot of individuals that when an inmate asks them something personal, they lie to the inmate as opposed to telling the inmate it's none of their business. I'll give you an example. I had one officer that was asked how many kids they had by an inmate. And I'm sure the inmate's looking for information to try to manipulate, maybe connect on a different level outside of the officer's prescribed function. And instead of the officer telling the inmate, it's none of your damn business, move on. 
He lies and tells the inmate he has seven children. So now he's appearing inconsistent because I'm sure other inmates have asked him how many kids he has and probably answered with all different numbers. Again, knowing that the officer had two, I knew that the officer had lied. So I asked the officer, I said, let me ask you a question. When the inmate asked you how many kids you had, how, how did you answer? Because I lied. I told him seven. I'm not going to tell him how many kids I have. I said, yeah, but you told him seven, right? And he goes, yeah. I said, why would you tell him seven? Why wouldn't you just tell the inmate it's none of his damn business? He goes, I don't know. I said, you know why? In my opinion, it's harder for you to tell the inmate it's none of their damn business as opposed to you lying. So you're going to be seen as inconsistent. If an inmate, if an inmate asks me how many kids I have, I'm going to tell him. None of your damn business. You don't need to know how many kids I have. I'm not going to lie and create a number. I don't have a problem telling the inmate it's none of their damn business. And in essence, I don't have a problem of telling the inmate no to anything. Again, this is not a profession for you if you have the inability to say no. And now a lot of people may see these questions as meaningless, but they're not. Information's being gathered and that sense of control is being given towards the inmate. Inmate asks a question, you are the one responding. You are reacting to what they're asking. Moving on, and again, the, the importance of having this dialogue is Dale taught me something. Dale says that, and I thought this was great advice, guys. Maybe you could find a way to utilize this. But again, if the inmate's asking you a question, and maybe that question's an effort to get knowledge or information, but more importantly, to get a level of control, you need to take that control back, which means that maybe it's good to answer their question with the question. Because think about it, guys, when you interview and interrogate somebody, when you get those people that you're interviewing, and every time you ask them a question, and they answer a question with the question, they have now put the interviewer in an in a, in a area where they're now responding. So the interviewer loses their sense of control. So same here. If an inmate asks you a personal question, and for some reason, you can't tell them this is none of your business. Because by the way, if you can't tell them it's none of your business, you need to really question being in this profession. But just to help us reestablish some power, because again, I'm looking for knowledge. So if the inmate, again, comes to me and says, how many kids do you have? I may turn around and say, how many kids do you think I have? I want to know why they're asking me that question. So I'm going to turn it around to them, because maybe this inmate heard I have two kids. I don't know. But I want you to answer that question for me. You're asking me how many kids do I have? How many kids do you think I have? Ganji, what type of car do you drive? What type of car do you think I drive? You know, the thing is, is by me asking them the question back, I regain a sense of control, but I'm also getting information from them. Why are they asking me how many kids I have? Do they know something? Are they testing me? Why are they asking what type of car I drive? Do they know something? Are they testing me? Again, I could lie. I could lie. I have seven kids. But maybe he knows the truth for whatever reason. I hope he doesn't, but maybe he does. So maybe I'll put that question back on them to see if he does know the truth. And in that case, how did you find out? What is it that you know that I don't know? So again, you ask the question to get that sense of control back. But most of the time, I will tell you, if an inmate asks me something personal... I do tell them, yo, it's none of your business. I have no problem telling them it's none of your business. I have no problem telling them no. But once in a while, depending how the inmate asks, I may turn around and say, hey, why do you think that? I want to know why you think that because I'm going to take that control back and hopefully get the information that I need. So I thought it was a good topic. Love your thoughts on this. Guys, if you haven't, the show Tear Talks for you, you brave men and women that work in corrections. So please subscribe, interact, engage, comment, hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. Stay safe. Whoa.